and welcome to the Simpkins Physics Corner Base Boosted Edition. Drinking my tea and doing some physics. Here is uh, the solutions. Here are, here are the solutions for our SHM. So first we have this block oscillating without friction. It says which graph represents the total mechanical energy. Now remember that definition means kinetic plus potential. I mean plus all the energies really. That's what mechanical energy means. And as we know, if this is frictionless, which it says it is, the total mechanical energy has to stay the same in our system by the conservation of energy. So number four has got to be D. Number five, uh, I often get students either saying B or C, and you can see why, because both of them claim that kinetic energy is minimum at both edges, which makes sense. The further out you go, the you're going to stop on either end, right? And you're going to be going the fastest as you pass through the middle. But the question is, is it B or C? And how would I figure that out? Well, because our energies here are going to be US, and that one particularly is one half KX squared. You notice this X squared relationship is going to determine that it has to be more of a parabolic shape like this. And in fact, our kinetic energy graph would look like this. Sorry, just kidding. This would be our kinetic energy graph. This would be our spring potential graph. They would be, if you superimpose them, they would be exactly opposite, right? So the answer for that one has to be C. And the reason it has to be curvy again is because of that x squared relationship, or if you want to think of it another way, one half mv squared as well. Going to number six, we have uh, a pendulum, and it says another one goes on a spring. So we have a pendulum, goes back and forth like this, and we have a little spring oscillator. And it says what happens if you double both of the masses? Well, for this one, all you have to do is consider the equations for both of those. So the period of a pendulum, 2 pi square root of L over G, and the period of a spring is 2 pi square root of m over k. Now you might notice a pendulum, we've said this before, the mass doesn't affect the pendulum period at all. And so it's got to be the same period, even if you double the mass. That's the only choice that uh, is the case there. So b has got to be the answer. Um, and as far as for the mass on the spring goes, you can see that if I double this, you see how that's a root 2, right? You see where the root 2 comes from? Because the mass doubled would be under the square root symbol. So yes, the number six has to be B. Number seven. An object is attached to a spring and oscillates with amplitude A in period T. The nature of the velocity and acceleration A of the object at time T over four is best represented by which of the following? Now, what I find is that most students don't even answer this question for the wrong spot or the right spot. This is T out here, right? And it's one, two, three, four pieces to get to T. So you're actually answering the question as you look at this spot right at the top here. That's t over 4. So that's the first thing. Consider if you, uh, as you were discussing this question, if you answer it at the correct location. Uh, but if it's, we're asking about velocity and acceleration there, uh, well, this is a position or a displacement versus time graph. And we know that the slope tells us the velocity. So what is that slope? Well, that's slope 0. Oh, the only choice with slope of 0, or the only choice with a velocity of 0, is choice D. Now, as far as the negative acceleration, you can see that our slope was positive, and then our slope was zero, and now our slope's negative as we ride this curve, or you can think of it as a negative parabola, is the reason that the acceleration is negative. So the answer for seven has to be D. Um, in this one, we have a pendulum and a mass on a spring, and then we take them to a different planet with twice the mass of Earth. Which of the statements is true about the period of the two objects? So let's get into this nuance here. If you take it to a new planet that has twice the mass, you might recall this old school equation. It's been a minute since we've used this one, but still applies. It is Fg equals g m2, m1 m2 over r squared. And so if you double the mass, that would double the Fg. And since Fg is really equal to mg, what you're really doing is you're doubling the gravitational acceleration. Right? So this planet would have twice the g. And I don't think that's a very difficult concept. If you have a planet that's twice as massive, it's going to pull you twice as hard. So the g gets doubled. So really this question is asking, what impact does doubling the g have on a pendulum and a spring? Well, we notice that the spring here uh, doesn't depend on that at all. The spring is square root of m over k. So the spring uh, was going to have the same period. Okay, And, uh, and if we look at the pendulum, dp, 2 pi square root of l over g, you can see here that an increase in g, since it's in the denominator, would lead to a decrease in period. So the pendulum period is shorter. Let's see, the period of the pendulum is shorter. Check. The mass of the spring is the same. Check. 
The answer for 13 then must be D. Um, now this one, <clears throat> this is a tricky one. I encourage you to pause the video, consider it, discuss it, and then see how it goes. But it's asking about which of the following is true for both spheres. So let's just go down one by one. The maximum kinetic energy is attained as the sphere passes through its equilibrium position. Think about it. Would it have the max Ke as it passes through the bottom? Sure, I don't see how you go any faster anywhere else with a pendulum, right? And would it have its maximum K as it passes through this equilibrium position? Because it's going to oscillate all the way up. It's going to go up, it's going to go down, it's going to go up, it's going to go down, right? And in fact, that's true as well. Oh, wow. We stumbled upon the right answer here right away. Now, as you read the rest of these, D is probably the most other tempting one. The most tempting other answer, it's not right though. The maximum uh, gravitational potential energy is attained when the sphere reaches its point of release. So that's true for the pendulum, right? But because of the way that we set the spring oscillator into motion, we pulled it down here, right? And that actually is at the height of zero. So you have UG is equal to zero down there. So we can't say the maximum GPE is attained when it's at the point of release because it has no UG or GPE at the bottom there. So the answer has to be A for number 11. As we get to number 14, this is where things get interesting. Now, if you've watched the Asynchronous 2 video already, you've seen at least one example of these. But this question is asking about the amplitude of the resulting simple harmonic motion. So if we consider this as the resting position, right, the spring hasn't been stretched yet, that's what it says, initially unstretched spring, it's going to fall through our equilibrium position and it's going to go all the way down to the bottom. And we know that this is going to be symmetrical. In other words, the equilibrium position right through the middle here, it's going to be the same distance from that point to the very top and that point to the very bottom. And when we say amplitude, it's important to understand that definition as well. Amplitude is defined as the maximum displacement from the equilibrium position. So that's amplitude. Some people think it's the entire thing. It's not. It's just the equilibrium position to the outer edge. If you were to consider this as maybe a sine wave, which we know is very related to our simple harmonic motion, it does the same kind of oscillating back and forth, the amplitude is just this part right here. Okay, It's not the whole up and down, it's just that part or that part. And you see those would be equal, right? That would be the amplitude. And you notice that's the maximum displacement from the equilibrium position. So let's talk about equilibrium. Here it is, equilibrium. At the equilibrium position, that's a very special spot because equilibrium means balanced forces. And so we could say the force of the spring is equal to the force of gravity at that place. Well, the force of the spring is kx from our equation sheet, and the force of gravity is mg. Oh, I think we know everything, don't we? Let's see, we know 40, we don't know x, uh, we know 0.1, and it's a multiple choice question, so I'm going to use 10 for g. That makes things real easy. 40x equals 1, divide both sides by 40. Turns out x is equal to 1 over 40 meters. Now you may say, well, Mr. Simpkins, you solved for how far the spring is stretched. What's that have to do with amplitude? Uh, just everything, <laughs> because the amplitude is how far we stretched from the resting or from the equilibrium position, and x is going to be defined as how far we were stretched as we went from that resting position down to that equilibrium position. So the amplitude here has got to be 1 over 40. <clears throat> the resulting period of oscillation, this is just a straight plug and chug here, so the period of the spring is 2 pi square root of or, uh, spring, so m over k, so it's going to be 2 pi square root of uh, m, which is 0.1 over 40, and I don't really feel like doing that math, but let's see if we can get somewhere close. So we got 2 pi Square root of, let's see, 0.1 divided by 40, that is a, a very small number. Let me pause and calculate this for you. All right, well, if you do the square root of stuff underneath, you get 0.05. You multiply by that 2, you get 0.1, which is a tenth. And so you get pi times 1 tenth, or a tenth of pi. So C would be the answer for number 15. Number 20, two objects of equal mass hang from independent springs of unequal spring constant. Spring of greater spring constant must have, well, tighter spring is going to have a not smaller amplitude, but a shorter period. And this is actually interesting. Did you know that the amplitude doesn't affect the period? Right. So if I take this spring and I only move it a little bit like this, it's going to bounce back and forth like that. It's going to do that in the same amount of time as if I displaced it way up here and it went all the way up and all the way down. The amplitude doesn't affect the period of a spring oscillator. So that one's got to be C for number 20. Number 24. Pendulum with a period of one second on Earth where the acceleration due to gravity is g is taken to another planet where its period is two seconds. The acceleration due to gravity on the other planet is most nearly 
Okay, well, let's see what happens here. We are looking at a pendulum, and that's 2 pi over squ or times square root of L over G. And really, it's saying here, we're going to double this psi. We're going to double the period. And so it's going to say, how do we get that to come out of what's over here? Now, it doesn't say that L changed. So really, the question is, how do I get a change in G to result in a factor change of 2? Right? Because 2 pi is a constant. That's not going anywhere. L is a constant. So, so really, the question here is, I'm going to turn everything into 1s and say, how much do I have to change this guy in order to get a 2 to come out of there? Okay, well, if I do 4G, that's 1 fourth, and then square that gets really messy, right? So that's not going to work. But what if we plug this guy in? That would be square root of 1 over 1 over 4, which would be square root of 4, which would be 2. That's what we're looking for. Okay, so, and the thing about this too, the longer period is because gravity doesn't pull as hard. Now you have to decide between A and B at that point, right? But you can do so mathematically with our equation. So the answer for 24 must be A. Here's our last one. Uh, it's saying that ideal massless spring is fixed to the wall at one end. Block of mass M is attached to the other side. It os oscillates with the amplitude A on a frictionless horizontal surface. The max speed of the block is Vm. The force constant of the spring is. So it's asking us to solve for K, right? Well, anytime you have a horizontal oscillator, it's going to be this exchange of Us and K, right? And now when it's saying uh, the maximum speed of the block is Vm, what that means is that as you go through the middle, it's all going to be K. And as you get to the end, it's all going to be US, right? Well, let's see if we can tie these things together. That means that the US over here is going to be equal to the K in here. So I can actually set them equal to each other. US equals K. It might look like this. 1 half KX squared equals 1 half MV squared. Oh, okay. So the halves cancel. And I'm solving for K. And I got MV squared over x squared, and you might say, well, Mr. Simpkins, I don't see that as any of our choices. Well, keep in mind, especially for horizontal oscillators, the x, the distance that you pulled out, is equal to the amplitude, because the amplitude is defined as how far you pulled it out from the resting position. So it actually turns, oh, sorry about that, it actually turns into exactly what we were looking for, which is answer D. So I hope you enjoyed the base boosted SLDs for today. Make sure you guys have your asynchronous one practice problems all completed. And I will see you next time in the Simpkins Physics Corner.